one. Hello. I'm here. <laughs> Hi, it is Anachuku Undoka. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello, good morning. Thank you very much for the invitation and uh, compliments of the season. Same to you. Same to you. Uh, yes, it is um, a happy new year. And, um, uh, you know, thank you very much for giving us of your time because I know you're quite quite busy, involved in different programs. Um, so we are hoping that, you know, during our conversation today, we'll get to find out more about you, your, your works, um, what you do not necessarily around poetry, because I need to quickly mention that you, you wear different hats. You are a performer, <laughs> a pianist, you are an author, you are a poet, among other things. Today yes. we are looking mainly at you as, a, uh, as a, a pianist and specifically at your performances of works by African composers. That's right. Okay, brilliant. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us. Let's just begin with a general question of asking where you are from. If you can just let us know where you are from. Um, I'm from uh, Nuri Kingdom in Anambra State, um, Nigeria. Anambra State in, is one of the states in the southeastern part of Nigeria. So I'm from Anambra State, Nigeria. Okay. Um, and I, I, I'm going to just, I guess, step right into the subject matter because we have quite a few topics to cover today. So okay. um, looking at your November 2019 lecture, which you titled Perspectives on African Pianism, the Piano Music of Nigerian and Ghanaian Composers. In that lecture, you've given us a definition of African Pianism. It's the style of a piano composition which borrows from the acoustic and percussive forms of African traditional instruments. Now, if we go with that definition, these types of works, they must be quite challenging to perform. And you, you have given us an interview before, a written interview, where you said um, that African, that you, you, the performer, you described the performer as an intermediary between the composer and the audience. So the That's pianist right. is the messenger, the medium, the spokesperson. It must be challenging to be a reliable and trustworthy messenger, looking at the definition you have given to us of African pianism. Yes, that's right, because um, the art of composition it's, itself doesn't um, immediately give a voice or resonance to a piece of work until the performer comes in. So that is where that um, uh, that definition, you know, takes from, you know, borrows from the the idea that the the performer is an intermediary because the music itself, when you write it, it's it's on paper or maybe a software or something. But for it to be performed, someone has to play it live. Someone has to make it come alive on stage. Um, so that's where the, the, the performer comes in. And with regards you know, to what you said about, you know, being trusted so much with that, the challenge is that most of the works we're performing by African composers, especially piano music, they are not uh, so very well known to have been recorded over and over again so that you say, oh, um, I can just go to YouTube or go, you know, maybe Spotify and listen to it and then have an idea of what it's like before you study. Most of the works I perform are premiers. <laughs> so you, it, it's, a, it's a lot of work to, you know, to do. you don't have to, you don't rely most of the time on um, recorded music, but you have to study it so well so, so that, you know, you're sure you're doing the correct, you know, interpreting the music uh, correctly. Yeah, that is one. Then the idea of uh, the African pianism that you first spoke about. Yeah, the instrumental music of indigenous African instruments, you know, we're talking about the drums and all the xylophones and the marimbas and all of that. When the, 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 the composer takes uh, their uh, rhythmic structure, the, the kind of, uh, you know, tonalities they have, the the melodies usually associated with them and all of that and then you use them to compose for the piano then when the pianist performs the pianist is is you know like trying to transfer what those instruments do to the piano to the piano the the, the piano becomes a surrogate instrument in the, in the sense that the piano becomes both the piano and that instrument you're playing for instance if the, if the music you're playing borrows heavily from the drum the, the drum ensemble the drum music you are playing both piano and drum at the same time. So the approach now becomes a little bit different uh, from, say, if you're playing a Chopin or, you know, uh, balls or, you know, Polonaise. So uh, uh, there are different approaches. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, it's quite technical. 
very very technical especially you know with regards to reading the complexity of readings and all of that but of course it's it's possible and we have you know a couple of pianists performing in that uh, tradition right now especially you know, performing actively the, the music of african composers okay um mm -hmm. Looking at that definition again and what you the explanation you've just given, do you think some of this is lost on the audience? Do you feel that you have to explain this to the audience before you start your performance? And you know, I, I guess I need to make, make this um I maybe confess this to you. When I listen to the performances of piano works by African composers, your performances, I don't mm -hmm. Without looking to a definition of, of African pianism, I just listen to it as the work for piano. I don't think of the fact that they've probably tried to, or they have, from what you've said, tried to introduce other instruments um, and include that in the composition and asked you to play it just as a work for piano. Now, if somebody doesn't tell me that, I'm just sitting there listening to a work for piano, not realizing that I'm probably listen, listening to an entire orchestra being performed on one instrument. What, what do you think? Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, for, the first thing I have to point out is the is the fact that, I mean, for the fact that what we call African pianism is, you know, th that this music, you know, is taken from that does not mean that they are they are just for some sort of uh, nationalistic identities. They these compositions are piano works in their own right. Okay. You know, of any standard. You know, but without the African, with the African pianism aside, if I don't explain anything to the audience, I mean, there has been instances where the music of Fred on the World Showcase, for instance, has been uh, likened to the music of uh, Bella Bartok, you know, okay. or some of these, you know, uh, composers, Western composers who wrote the kind of music taken from their own, own cultures as well. So if you're not told that, if you don't inform the audience that, these have something to do with African uh, traditional uh, instruments, then their piano works in their own right. You know, they don't have to be. Uh, so, but yeah, going back to what, what you were talking about, you don't necessarily have to tell, you know, introduce all the pieces, you know, the, to the audience and tell them everything. The, the reason we do that, especially now, is that most of these works are new to the classical piano repertoire. They are unknown. If you go to a concert or you know go for a recital, the, the pianist is probably coming to play something you've heard before over and over again. In fact, one of the reasons classical music is the way it is is because of the variety of interpretations, the insight of interpretations that the same work you know over and over again you've performed yourself that someone can give life to it in a different way. That is the, that's the only thing. Because how do you explain the idea of going to the concert to listen to something you've listened to over and over and over again? You know, you want to hear something new. You want to see the perspective of the pianist. So the pianist or the performer brings his own or her own individuality into the interpretation of the work. Yes. So even the performance of the same piece twice is not the same. Every every music performance is a work of art on its own. Yeah. So so the the idea is that we try to be, talk about it to introduce both the music and the composer to the audience because. They are largely unknown repertoires. They are new to the repertoire. You know, okay. we're introducing music that they don't know. It's not like you're playing Beethoven or Schubert or Mozart or Prokofiev or any of the you know um, music and the core uh, classical piano repertoire. So you're playing this music. First of all, you're telling someone you have piano music from Nigeria or Ghana. They are surprised. They have no clue that there are composers from such places. And mm. then you want to just yeah. play it and leave. No, you have to okay. explain. Like, talk to them to yeah. prepare them for what they're about to hear. Okay. Um, yes, I, I think we are going to risk running an, an entire interview on African pianism um, this morning. <laughs> well, if that happens, that's okay. It's worth it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we do have a number of other topics that we need to cover. Um, but yes, that's all right. I think there's probably a need for even more conversations around that topic. Um, because several points have, have been highlighted just from the brief conversation we've had so far. Uh, because, you know, you've said these are and it's, it's obvious. Yes, they are composers. These are works for piano, full stop. They don't have to be set aside as, you know, special separate separate group. Um, yeah, at the right. same time, they seem to be coming across now as a separate group because of the intentions of the composers. But I guess because of um, the, the time constraints, I will you know, try to move the conversation along. But thanks for the insight um, already this morning. So we are going to look at or we are going to listen to uh, Oga. Thank you.
So that was Oga by Christian yeah. Onyeji. Yeah, it's Christian Onyeji. Yes. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about your preparations for that performance, studying the work, interpreting it, and, you know, as you said previously, ensure, <laughs> trying to ensure that you are passing or communicating the, the correct message. I don't, I don't really know how you will identify or how you will decide what is correct, but I guess as a performer, you can also give us some more details on that. Well, when it comes to uh, a performance, especially solo piano music, where you have to memorize music, we're talking about correct interpretation. The first thing to think about is that you're being faithful to the score, because, I mean, you had a score that you studied, yes. the music the composer uh, wrote, uh, before you bring in your own interpretations, maybe in legato and all of that, if that is needed, if that's the kind of music. But what I have to say is that preparing this music, thankfully, thankfully, uh, Professor Onyeji, in that, in the, in the collection where the, the, the work is published, uh, it's a, a, a collection edited by uh, William uh, Chapmanyaho, uh, who is also a pianist in his own right, a classical concert pianist. Uh, also specializing in uh, piano music by African descent composers. He has this uh, compilation uh, where Olga was published. So there are composer notes, you know, before the music, where, you know, composers made notes you know, about the music and how it should be performed, you know, performance notes. Yes. So to speak, yeah. So uh, to guide the, the pianists in the study and performance of the music. So I took a, you know, a look at that, and also considering the fact that I had performed it before uh, as an undergraduate at the University of Nigeria, where the composer, uh, Professor Oneji, was my lecturer and also my uh, piano uh, uh, teacher at some point. So you've had that advantage, you've had the advantage of getting... Yes. So when you have the advantage of working closely with the composer of the ah, music, I okay. think it makes a little bit of you know difference. It, it adds it, and it, it adds an advantage to what you're doing because the composer would you know guide you and also some the pian in this in this case pre, uh, Professor Onyeji himself is a pianist. He's <laughs> all right, so he plays the piano not just as a, you know as a composer. So he he taught me uh, the music. So it also helped in the preparation because that music is a little bit technical because of the kind of intricate readings. It, it has, although it's not like it's not what you would call maybe a good eight piece, but it's it's technical in, in its own way because of the readings. 
So mm-hmm. um, if, you know, having the composer guide you through that process is, you know, a, an advantage. But that was years ago, years, years ago. So recently, November, while I was preparing for that, I had to, um, you know, go back with it and study it and all of that. And of course, okay. considering the fact that you have to memorize and, you know, so, yeah, but it, it was much, you know, a, a much easier process for me because of the okay. background I already had, you know, with the music. Yes. And the yes, and you've had the, um, the chance to speak to the composer. Okay. Um, now, now let's let's move on to your general, shall we say, your campaign of trying to promote African composers and perform their works. You you yeah. feel the need to pro- to promote African composers, as you've said, because you believe that their works really should be heard alongside works of other known composers. Um, the thing is this: African composers of particular works and those who compose in particular styles, for example, choral composers, they are very very well known across Africa. Well, some of them, I beg your pardon, let's be specific. Some of them are unbelievably well known or, or quite well known, well performed. Some have even become what some people might refer to as, you know, as a staple in Africa. So, and this is composers of particular works, particular styles, living composers. Are we looking at a problem, sorry, a solution that's looking for a problem here? Well, I think there is a little bit of difference when you, uh, when you, when you compare choral music to instrumental music with regards to. It's not music just. Music, it's not only music choral music, music, you know. But yes, let, let me let you carry on. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not exactly it's, um, because, uh, first of all, you you're looking at the figures. You know, you have more choral groups, more. You know, choirs, the church choirs, the ones in schools, the, the choral groups on their own, all over uh, the continent. You have more of that than instrumentalists. You know, uh, musicians are trained to play <laughs> instruments, especially the, the piano. So um, you have more composers writing for choral music because choral music is, is more performed than instrumental music. You understand? Think, so I, I, if, yes, but, yeah, yeah, when let, a composer let me, writes. Let me, let me just add some more details to this. I suppose what, what I'm looking question. at is okay, yeah. yes, what I'm looking at is these choral perform these choral works, right? They are well yes. known in Africa, across Africa, different countries. You have one composer who's performed maybe in you know 20, 30 countries. Um, but yes. that performer, that composer may not be known outside of, of, of Africa. So I'm looking at these piano works now. Are we certain that as part of your campaign, a lot of these works are not already receiving a lot of performance across Africa? And maybe your campaign is more to communicating with those who are not in Africa to say, listen, have you not heard, have you heard these works before? Come and watch my performance and learn about African composers. So are you, have you looked into that? Have you found out if they are not known already across Africa, oral composers? Well, uh, it, it is not, there, there is no, um, I would say, first of all, some are known while okay. some are not, are not, you know, they don't all enjoy <laughs> the same uh, patron when it, yeah, when it comes to uh, the performance of their works and all of that. For instance, um, in the Western world, some uh, music also uh, by older composers, for instance, for like uh, Joshua Zoewe or Ayo Bankole, their music, you know, uh, received performances and, you know, world premieres. Uh, all over the world, we've had some pianists perform their music and record them as well. You know, for instance, uh, William Chapman Yahoo has a, a CD recording of some of these compositions. And then you have other pianists, you know, Rebecca Omodia, Glenn Inanga, and the rest of them playing this music, performing them, you know, around the world. So um, some composers have received, you know, are currently receiving that, um, you know, attention, their, their work yes. as well. Okay. Yeah. But, on the African continent, I don't think it's it's um, it's that much, you know. Uh, they are well, very well known it, with regards to the instrumental music, not choral music. Okay. You know, there are composers. Some of the composers writing for piano also have choral music. Most of yeah. them are known more on the African continent for their choral music than their instrumental music or for, for their piano music. Why? Right. Because you don't have a lot of pianists performing such music in concerts on the continent. Okay. Um, yeah, on the continent. So what you have mostly, even if there are performances like that, uh, you know, maybe piano students in music uh, departments in universities or conservatories studying yeah. this music just to have um, 
uh, an experience of the diversity yes. in, in, in you, you, music. But they are not, my argument is that they are not so often taken to the concert stage. When okay. you talk about classical you, you, music piano in Africa, it's Mozart and all the Western yes. <laughs> composers okay. and all of that. Yeah. Okay, but you've you've kind of you've kind of led us to I guess the next topic that I, I want to explore. I'm looking at your the e, um, Choreo Waves, which was released in 2018. It contains a, a works by a selection of African composers. Um, and in reference to the pieces that you selected for the EP, you've said that you like the fact that they are by 21st century African composers whose works portray our African heritage. Um, That's right. How do you source these works? Because now we are talking about um, supporting African composers, the ones that are well known, the ones that already have uh, an established presence, they are already well known and performed across the continent um, and perhaps even beyond. How do you mm -hmm. source these works? What is your criteria for selection? You have mentioned um, something about on somewhere else online in a different, different interview that, um, that the fact that African musical institutions exist where we have composers whose works have been performed, for example, students performing recitals of lecturers' works or recitals using their lecturers' mm -hmm. works. Now, how do you source the works? Because you know you are trying to, on the one hand, promote African composers, but on the other hand, you've talked about how you must connect with the music and how you want to be able to make sure that the music speaks to the audience that you're performing to. Again, you mentioned this in a separate interview. You've effectively mm. become nowadays, is, um, is referred to as a gatekeeper. What is the weight of responsibility on you to make sure that you don't, shall I say, perhaps um, favor particular composers? over others because of how you connect with particular composers works <laughs> okay uh the first the first thing i'll talk about is you know availability you know it's sometimes it's you know it's a little bit difficult there are challenges you know trying to get some composers to give their works to you uh to perform i've had um uh some experiences in the past where you know, a composer told me, oh, no, um, I think uh, we need to publish this first. I wouldn't want to have it heard now and all of that. I want to have it published before it's performed and all of that. So the first thing I think about it is the music available. Can I get across to the composer? You know, because to be honest, most of the composers I, I spoke about are still living. You know, some of them are still electoral mm -hmm. teaching university. Mm -hmm. So I, I tried to get in contact with them and... Uh, tell them about what I'm doing. And then some of them send their music, you know, uh, very, you know, they like, they're eager to hear it performed and all of that. And then there's been instances where, when, I mean, some other composers heard of, you know, the music, the performances, what I was doing, and they contacted me to send their music, you know, to, to study and perform them. And there are some, some works like that I still have that I've not had time to look at, you know, to perform as well, because, um, of the time, of course, of my schedule, because I have to study music, memorize it, and prepare for uh, for concert and all of that. So, yes, I I just reach out to the composers, and then uh, sometimes uh, studying the music, I try to get in touch to make sure that I'm that I'm doing the right thing, you know, as well, and also that um, the music is not uh, misrepresented. Okay. And, but can I, can I just quickly talk about the first um, reason you gave or the first approach you take? You said availability. So yes. this is basically down to you as the performer putting in the work to, to source and to look for these compositions. Now, yes. what happens to the ones that you don't find or what happens to the ones that are not available? Because one thing I have discovered since, and in fact, one of the things that led to the creation of the African Composers website and Facebook page is the fact that um, the internet basically does not really know anything about African composers. So if, if you are doing it, for example, a Google search, let's say you cannot reach particular composers, you want to just randomly look for some, you do a Google search. You may not find what you have described, for example, knowing that there are universities, institutions that have composers, the internet may not tell you this. A Google search may not reveal this, not picking on Google, but you know, a Google search or a search online using any search engine may not reveal this. So what happens to the ones who fall on the side, the ones that don't come across your radar? First of all, the, the challenge to look at is the, uh, the uh, near absence or if not uh, complete absence of the structure of music publishing. Um, let me say in Nigeria now, let me not say on the continent or generalize. Okay. South Africa is huge. You don't have that structure. Like say, okay, composers, when you're done writing for music, 
you can maybe through an agent or contact the publishers to publish your music and all of that. So m music publishing is paramount. That, that is the first thing to consider, that some of the pieces I even play are not published. Like they are not they are not published music. The composers, you know, work, you know, finish print print it out and then that's it. Or maybe they just email it to you. They're not published, so you don't have a source, you know, uh, you know, where you you can say, let me go to this place and then get all the music by the composers. Some of them still have their music on their shelf. They they compose. They done with the work. They print it out and it's right there on their shelf. Maybe they give it to one music student or, or the other, they play it in the department and then that's it. So you have to reach out to them or they reach out to you and tell you, oh, I have this music and they send it to you. You print it and start working on it. So that lack of resource, that structure of um, of, of publication, of publishing music, uh, that, that is what it's missing. Even for choral music, they write this music and send to you know, the music directors and all of that. You don't have that choral publishing. It's just recently that some composers started on their own publishing their own music by themselves. Okay. Like I saw, uh, for instance, I saw your post of the uh, ancestor, uh, Dr. Judo Nam, putting his music together. Back in the days, we had Mbo music. I think uh, uh, late Joshua Ozoigwe and uh, some of them tried to publish their own music. Even uh, Professor Laz Ekweme, for instance, had his own, uh, I think Linus Lina, uh, publishing, published his own music in Lagos for choral music and all of that. So. You know, the composers just on their own put their music together. And also, I remember Dr. Alvan Iko Kumamara, who put, you know, put his music together publicly. So you don't have, like, a, a, a huge structure set aside for publishing and the, well, the, the music most reason that you can go. So you can't really say, oh, I, I'm, you know, this person is playing just music by these people and, you know, some composers are, are being sidelined. But where, where, how do you get the scores? Where are I, I they? Guess where that's, is the I music? guess that's, that's the question, you know, that's the question. Where um, is the music? How do you get the scores? You that's know, kind of that's that's sort of what I'm I'm trying to get at. You know, there is uh, that oh, oh. no such thing. You have to reach out to them, ask them. You know, so it's sometimes it's very difficult. Mm. You know, and I think that's why I think uh, William Chapman Yahoo did a lot a lot of work because the the compilations he had, the the book uh, Piano Music of Africa. It's up to five. In fact, not only did he gather all the music, he he arranged them in. Uh, in volumes, you know, first volume and the way the music is structured, like intermediary, uh, the advanced intermediary, and all of that. Going, yeah. yeah. So yeah. So it's um, it's a lot of work. So and some some of the music, uh, published on that. You know, also he also collected music from the African diaspora, like the Cuba, from Brazil, Jamaica, and all of that. So it's 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 very quite uh, you know extensive. Uh, uh, the work he did, but apart from that, I don't think you have any. It's it's very difficult to find scores, or maybe the, the composers are not. Uh, they don't understand. Uh, some of the composers are, are yet to find out ways to project their works out there so that you can get them online, or maybe sites where they can be sold. I mean, we can pay. We pay to buy them. If you find them online, you pay and then buy them. But well, uh, you know what? A, a lot of a lot of this is changing. I suppose what I'm what I really I mean we are about to run out of time now. But what I'm trying to get to the heart of is, if I want to perform works, do I pick names that I know, or do I run a Google search? Because for example, or an online search. Sorry, more mm. and more composers, as you have said, are putting their works online. In fact, they've been doing this for a number, for years. Um, mm. Do you do a general search online to say? All right, I'm going to this particular website that sells sheet music, and I'm going to Google African composers of piano works. Or do you go specifically to a particular institution that teaches and uh, music composition? Do you seek out particular names? You said people reach out to you, but those are the ones who are aware of you as a performer and who think that he might perform my work. We are, mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to understand how wide is this net that you cast? Is it particular institutions, particular people, particular friends, colleagues, contemporaries? What then happens to those, as you've said, who put their works online? Who who reaches out to them? Well, I I believe uh, every performer, uh, uh, we all have our own uh, uh, specific ways of sourcing <laughs> uh, uh, works for performance. So what I do is that I I study mostly music for now, uh, published. Uh, in the in the set, the Oxford uh, Press set by uh, William Chapman Yahoo, and also in addition to that, I reach out to to composers that I know who who have written piano music, and I also play the music 
uh, that has been sent to me. Uh, there are some compositions that, that have been sent to me to, uh, to study and perform. That so is this, now, a, is this still an I've open not, option? I've not gone online looking for okay. scores by African composers. Now, um, and for those who are I watching have. our interview, sorry, because of time, <laughs> for those who are watching this interview or who might watch this interview later, I guess this is a, an open option for them. They can reach out to you. Maybe those who are studying music composition in different parts of Africa, are they... Um, are you basically saying yes? You can reach out to me. You can send me your works, but then yeah, you, of course, obviously, will then decide which ones. Yes, I, no, I, I take I take all the piano works, and when I look at them and study them, I decide if it works for okay. my concert or the recital or what I'm trying to do. Uh, like we discussed in the past, I and the, the written interview, I there is a way I select the 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 music. You know, the, the my performance that I like to. I like it to like tell a story. I don't want it to be so disjointed. So it depends on the kind of music, you know, the, the piano music that a composer has written. But I'm very, very well open to, you know, uh, piano music by all African composers. I'm open to receiving them. I'll look at them and then, uh, you know, study the ones that resonate uh, with what I'm trying to do, communicate to the audience. Mm. Yes. Well, we have spent quite, uh, we spent all of the interview um, talking about, you know, you as a performer, how you prepare to perform a particular works, how you interpret works, um, sourcing music, supporting African composers, which is something that you, you know, as anybody who follows you at all will discover you are specific and you are clear about your interest in supporting African composers, which is, you know, commendable. Um, the fact that you're, you know, you're laser focused, you're trying to help certain voices be heard. Um, there is one more question I would like to put to you, if we can just maybe quickly go over this because we have kind of gone over our time. And then once, okay, when, we, okay. when we've discussed that question, I would then uh, play the the last video, which is um, Nigerian dance number one. But let's okay. let's quickly um, address this particular topic. It might go on for a while, the, you know, addressing it because it's quite an involved one. So I'm going to look again at your November, 2019 lecture. Where you okay. discussed, okay. yes, um, the topic of that lecture was perspectives on African pianism, the piano music of Nigerian and Ghanaian composers. Um, if you, like me, have visited, you've stepped out of the African continent, you paid a visit to, you know, a certain part of the world here or another part of the world there, you will start to observe people use expressions like, um, I, "I'm having a tour of the continent of Africa." But when you dig deeper, you discover that the person has only visited two countries, maybe two West African countries or two South Africa, Southern African countries. But they use the expression, a tour of Africa. Specifically now looking at African composers, you go around, um, you look online, you see people saying things like uh, event organizers saying, this is an event looking at African composers or the works of African composers. When you dig deeper, you realize that the, the topic, the title of the event, the label, the brand does not match what they are doing in reality. But looking at your topic, you said it is perspectives on African pianism. You are specific, pianism. And mm. then you mentioned piano music of Nigerian and Ghanaian composers. Why do you think certain uh, people, certain organizers, certain institutions are lazy? about Africa. They make sweeping statements, overextended statements. They use the name in such a lazy, laid back fashion. There is no regard. There is no need to be specific or some people say nowadays to be deliberate. But with you and people who work like you, you know, people who work in your space, Africans generally are more respectful about the name of Africa. What is the, where is this laziness coming from? And to be fair, it's not just laziness on the part of non-Africans. You can also see it with Africans as well. They do one thing in one village, in one town, and they say, I've gone to do this in Africa. There is no respect like you have put in your title. Um, I think uh, in the world we live in today, there is more need to be specific. Um, otherwise, you run the risk of uh, hasty generalizations that will, you know, uh, you know, uh, negate what you're trying to promote or what you're trying, what you're on about. So, um, First of all, I understand Africa is a is a huge continent. It's it's a large continent. <laughs> you know, you, you don't. Uh, there are things we have to be very careful about. As, okay, the piano music. When I if I want to say 
uh, piano music perspectives on African piano. I say the piano music of Africa, and then I don't talk about the piano music from North Africa because there are composers yeah. writing for the piano from Egypt. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, and they are well established. They're not. They're not new. Exactly. They're not just coming up. They are well yeah. established. So if you are going to talk about piano music from Africa, you have to go. You have to make sure you talk about Egypt. Yes, but you, you say know, you are I, being specific. You are saying piano, <laughs> but some 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 event organizers cannot put in the effort to be specific. They just put out this major label saying African composers. Then you rush over to see if you can find out about African composers. And you discover, hang on a minute, this does not reflect reality. Where, you know, so why is it that it is with us specifically, there seems to be a laziness in association to Africa. Do you think we are the ones who are not challenging these narratives or is this just what it is because of historical reasons? No, I don't think there is a historical, I think, first of all, um there, there is still and i think it's shameful you know that in a world we live in today some people still think africa is one place <laughs> you know now I, I don't want to veer off and start talking about you know like <laughs> i said it was literature, <laughs> literature <laughs> something in fact there is a website uh, africa is a country you know there have been uh, lots and lots of essays and uh, you know critical essays uh challenging the narrative about Africa. You know, even people here in the, in the Western world, some of them, when you say Africa, oh, I'm going to Africa. Oh, when are you going to Africa? You know, they, they talk about it as if Africa is one tiny village and all of that. And I tell them, listen, Africa, Africa is very big. It's very huge. You know, we have a lot of countries, different time zones. Africa is not one place. Um, I think uh, people are in a hurry to generalize you know, for some reason. And also, you, you want to look at the business part of it, maybe just to draw traffic to what they're doing and then... But I think it's important that when, when you, you're doing something like that, you have to be specific ab about what you're doing. I mentioned um, Nigerian and Ghanaian composers. Even though in the lecture, I, I spoke more about, you know, some music of the Nigerian composers. But from the beginning, I, 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 I had to establish the fact that we share a lot in common you know, in artistically when it comes to the kind of music and all of that, uh, uh, as it relates to African pianism. Okay. But also, yeah, if you look at the list of composers, you know, you have also the Ghanaian composers, the Ken Kaffrey, uh, uh, um, uh, J.H. Kwaben and Ketia, and, you know, the rest of them are wrote uh, for the piano and the rest of them. So I think it's it's important to to be specific, you know, to look at what what exactly you're doing. I, I'm not quite sure what the reason might be, but I think people just uh, are in a hurry to just pass off uh, anything uh, as to be one thing. And mm -hmm. for a case of Africa, I think it, it's, it's rather complex because you're dealing with a lot of countries on the continent and it's not easy that way to say, oh, the piano music of Africa. You know, and then when you look at it, it's just maybe one or two countries. And, yes, uh, yes, so yes. You cannot, you cannot imagine how many times you know you look at these events and the surprise. You just think. And another thing is, there doesn't seem to be. I mean, this is a, this is a whole different interview. So let's not go too deep into this. But sometimes you, the names you see, um, are not necessarily known in Africa. So you start to, as somebody who's worked with music for a while, you start to wonder. Well, sorry. When are you going to start to promote the ones that Africans know? You know, the event organizers. There's a there's a there's a separation basically. It's almost like a lack of link. Uh, sorry, an absence of a link um, between the continent and event organizers who are especially are organizing events outside of the continent of Africa. There's a narrative being promoted that doesn't really reflect what's on the ground. But you know what? Yeah, you you. I think one of the things you've said is quite important. The need to draw traffic. The name, yeah, Africa, the, the brand, Africa. Africa. Oh, Africa. This is Africa yes. about Africa. And then everybody comes in and then they find out that, oh, <laughs> this is not really about Africa. Like Africa, Africa. Maybe they just okay. want to get people to come around. I think it's it's business. You know, that's part of uh, being commercial. You know, commercial. You have to get people, draw traffic, get people to come, uh, you know, be part of what you're doing. And yeah, but I think it's, it's quite shameful if... You know, if you know such organizers or you know people are not careful with that because uh, it, it could do a lot of harm, mm. you know, because you're not you're not uh, painting the right pictures, you're not portraying the right narratives. Yes, or, yes. Or, or you're like mis mis uh, misrepresenting uh, the people. Yes. So you say this is it, but in actual fact, that's not the case. Yeah. So yeah, that happens. 
And yeah. I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Anyway. No, 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 I, I do not think. Yeah, to be, to, be, to be honest, I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. I think it's something that might go on for a while. Mm, okay. Yeah, um, so but, uh, we'll have to start having conversations about how to change that or challenge that. Yes, yeah, so that is I mean, ongoing, I can assure you, okay, especially okay. in the literary world. Yeah. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Um, I'm not trying to promote the African Composers website, but that is part of what the African Composers website is striving to do, is striving to say, hello, have a, you know, sit back. And this is the wider perspective of what Africa is producing in terms of composers. It's not what a particular institution outside of Africa says it is, or a particular person with a particular platform who is well known. It's not what they say it is. This is the reality of live, the lived, from the lived experience of Africans. So, and, and that's, that's critical to have everybody's voice heard or as much as possible, everybody's voice. Sorry, I don't know if I can add something a little bit to it because um, for you as a curator of you know, the African composer, you, you might have to deal with um, a debate about who an African composer is. Is it, the, uh, is it any composer writing African music style or the composer has to be born on the continent, has to be African by birth. Because there are composers that are not Africans who are trying to, you know, follow that tradition to write such music. They tell you, oh, this is African music and they write it. Do they qualify as African composers as well? Oh, yes. I, I, don't, I don't know if that debate, if I don't think I'm qualified, to be fair. I mean, thanks for the vote of confidence, but I have thought about that extensively over a period of time. But I, thought, yeah, because I don't think I'm qualified to, to answer that. You know, that there question. are gray areas. That, that's my problem with identities. Sometimes identities can be very complex. We think it's just yes, simple. Yes, we pass no, it just, we say, just oh, African composer. So who is an African composer? Is it a composer just born to... on the African continent or just any composer writing African music? Yeah, that question is very easy to answer, to be honest, because somebody writing African music is a composer, as you said earlier, about the composers of piano works. We've kind of gone really, really far into this <laughs> into our time, but just to quickly address that, um, it doesn't matter if you write in the style of Joshua Uzoigwe. You know, if an American is writing in the style of Joshua Uzoigwe, he doesn't become an African. He's African writing African, for African pianism. You know, you've, exactly. So it's the genre, it's the style. That didn't make yeah. the person African. That's an easy question to answer. I think there are actually more, what you said about identity, there are more complicated questions that I don't think I'm qualified to answer. Um, so in terms of the criteria for picking people who are put on the website, on the list, it's picking somebody who has identified themselves as an African. That's the only as criteria. African, yeah, that's right. yes. So if there's an yeah, article clear, where, right? they, where they've described themselves as an African, that's the criteria, you know. There is no, I, I'm not qualified to start <laughs> dealing with people's identities. So it's up to how you define you, how you describe yourself. And I'm also very, very intentional when it comes to getting the voices of those in Africa heard. Because I've come, I've visited a foreign country, I've seen how particular voices are being promoted. But the voices of the people that I performed in Africa growing up are not being promoted. So there is obviously there is obviously um, an eclipse that is being placed over those who are in Africa. So the, the deliberate um, motive of the website is to say, don't listen to just the voices who are giving a bigger platform outside Africa. There are voices you need to hear from, and I'm on. The I'm not going to go back on that. That's absolutely not something that I'm going to, um, you know, try to water down. It's unforgivable, to be fair to know that we've known composers for decades. And when you come outside of Africa, nobody's heard of them. And yet events are being held talking about African composers. That's just disingenuous. So um, when it comes to performing works like you know, Joshua Uzoi on over a circuit, listen, that doesn't make you an African. It's just the style, it's a genre. So that's an easy one. It's identities. Yeah. Once you tell me you're an African, your name goes on the list, especially if you can prove, and you must be able to prove that you're a composer. Um, I'm not qualified to deal with uh, different kinds of identities and all that. It's what you tell me that I'm going with. So that's that's that. Sorry, <laughs> this is my interview, but that sort of tries to address. Um, yeah, that's that's right. That, that query. Um, but I we have. I mean, I'm I'm really grateful. Thank you very much for your time. We have absolutely well, gone over well. today. I'm going to. I guess we're going to close off the interview by listening to um, Nigerian dance number one again. I mentioned his name just now by Joshua um, Uzoigwe. I don't know. Thank you very much. Um, for your time, it is on a uh, You have some people watching, people listening. We Thanks can see comments. <laughs> no problem. Uh, thank well, you. Thank hope you that we can... for your comments and for joining. Yes, yes, and you know we thank hope that we much. can keep in touch. We keep following your progress online. Thank you very much for you know the work that you are doing, and um, you know hopefully 
as I said, we keep in touch, follow your progress, and you know, hopefully we hear from you in in, in not too distant future. Yes, I look forward to that as well. Thank you very Thank much for having you. me. Thank you very much.